What's good, YouTube? Dub Digital. Crypto news market trends. We got a cool one from Coin Telegraph, dated Perfect. July 12, 2020. Three industries that will be blockchain innovators post pandemic. So this is a very speculative kind of article, right? But I'm bringing this to you because it shows you how people in the industry that are very close to the ground of crypto are thinking, what they see, what they think that this new technology can be implemented into to right away affect change, right? So basically we have Fabio Cassinin. I am not going to pronounce any names, y'all. Fabio Cassinin, co-founder of blockchain fintech firm Nash, believes that as the world comes out of COVID-19 pandemic, blockchain technology offers a unique opportunity to the public due to its borderless nation, um, nature. So blockchain is a global thing. It's a global market. Um, there's no barrier to entry as long as you have the internet, which is everyone on the earth almost. A lot of people have cell phones. Even people who don't have banking services sometimes have cell phones. So they have access to the internet. As long as you're on that, you can participate in the global cryptocurrency economy actually just the global economy in general we'll get into some of the reasons why later down the article Cassinan states that he sees the greatest emerging use case in blockchain for three core industries in a post-pandemic era governments nonprofit and small to mid-sized businesses so let's think think this through a little bit right governments obviously they can't get a stimulus check out they can't get one out to save your life did you all see that that article that came out a while ago discussing that they they paid like billions of dollars to dead people and there's there's businesses that haven't gotten their loans and there's people who haven't gotten their first stimulus check and they're already talking about much more but like this is a huge problem right how how, how does a stimulus check work a stimulus check is given to a person a consumer to go spend or aka stimulate the economy by spending and giving money by you giving me money i can then go and, and buy something else too because i have more money and, and it's like one of those effects right it just gets the ball moving but it don't work if people don't get the stimulus so that's one thing blockchain could do also nonprofits, obviously it's like the best way to donate because you see it go straight to that foundation and then you could also see how much that foundation gives to the actual charity <laughs> that they said they're gonna help but you know who knows i mean most most donations nowadays are done through like at the checkout line at the grocery store and like you want to donate Perfect. to like i don't know dog prostate disease or whatever and you're like yeah sure but where does that money go do you see it get to the place that you donated to no you don't blockchain could change that and the last thing is what is the last thing? <laughs> Small to mid-sized businesses. So obviously blockchain is its own system. It's a, it's its own pay uh, accounts payable and its own accounts receivable. So basically in business, you, if you were a big business, you have two uh, departments, right? You'd have one called accounts payable, which basically gets invoices from your uh, cust uh, from your suppliers, or people you do business with saying, hey, you need to pay me this. And then those people in that department make sure you're not late and they make sure your payment goes out and they make sure you have enough money blah, blah blah there's a bunch of people who do that right and then also you have accounts payable which shoot no <laughs> switched around accounts payable is basically paying people out paying people who've given you and done services give me materials yada yada accounts uh receivable is basically you pestering your customer saying hey the 60 days are passed you owe us money blah 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 on the blockchain you could automate all that through computer code so that just like saves you a bunch of money as a small business or a mid-sized business so basically he goes on to say this could mean in terms of government by the way i go off a tangent there but in terms of government um, Cassian says this could mean using blockchain for stimulus checks instead of sending payments via traditional systems, which takes much longer and are prone to errors. Along with using blockchain to speed up the process, the current system could and should begin allowing individual accounts directly on the network without the need for intermediaries. For the profit sector, Kissian says the donation oper well let me not, let me not start that right now, but Basically, just kind of said what I said, right? Stimulus checks. <laughs> that is one of the greatest failings of the government thus far this year, is saying we're going to help you out and not helping a lot of people out. 
because our financial system was made in the 70s, okay? There's no interconnectedness, there's no interoperability, there's not even really any updating going on. Obviously, if they're paying dead people, damn, that's like crazy. Let's move on to the public sector, uh, nonprofit sector. So Casey says the donations could operate similarly, similarly, I don't know why I can't say that word right now, to how seamless payments should with, uh, should with blockchain. Blockchain means being able to hire overseas. Given the technology is borderless and allows global payments, giving anyone access to the global economy, whether they're a small or large company. See, that's a big deal. See, that's a big deal in terms of like, you know, the private sector. I mean, nonprofit, we don't got to talk about it too much. It's basically in donations. You can see where it's getting donated. But for the private sector, it's a huge deal, right? Because not only are you getting all these, um, getting rid of all these inefficiencies, getting rid of all these positions that really shouldn't be there because you're automating them, mainly accounting, and, and other things, of course, but the one that comes out to my head right away is accounting, right? Because I used to work at a company that was very big, and they had a whole bunch of people in accounts payable and accounts receivable, and honestly, this is the 21st century. We should be making some, like, efficiency gained in that, like, reducing the amount of people it takes for that. So, blockchain's perfect example of that. But also, it lets you interoperate globally. It lets you get into a very global marketplace. If you were a small business um, trying to advertise to your local community, if you're a small business, medium-sized business, trying to advertise in your local geographical region, say Southern California, Northern Texas, never been in Northern Texas, not even sure why I threw it out there. But if you're in Northern Texas, I mean, now your, your reach is greater. Because anyone with any cryptocurrency can most likely use your blockchain or use an exchange service to swap into your coin to use your blockchain. Before you were really just regu- you were really just limited to the people in the United States if you were in the United States. And if you're a small business, you're really just like limited to people in your county or your city. Now you're you're opening up. You're you're starting to get more eyes on your product. More eyes, more attention usually equates to more dollars. And that's great. Um, and then lastly, he says cryptos as a safe haven in a time of crisis. Well, that's pretty relevant. Addressing the role of cryptos to help mitigate the effects of the crisis originated by the coronavirus pandemic. Or, I shouldn't have said that, now YouTube's going to demonetize me, damn it. Nash's co-founder said that an issue worth considering is the fact that cryptocurrencies provide a safe haven for mismanaged national currencies. People are facing withdrawals at ATMs, and if you guys didn't know that, I'm going to do a video on that. They're, they're facing withdrawals at ATMs and seeing their savings evaporate following spiraling inflation, mainly for people outside the United States right now. Cryptocurrencies can protect against both these things. Not only do you control your assets, meaning you can never have withdrawals blocked, but most currencies have built-in protections against inflation, which are hard to change or on account of their decentralized nature. Mainly, Bitcoin. Hard cap supply means promised and increasing purchasing power down the line. Inflation is only good for the nation. It's only good for the country. It allows the country finance wars that you shouldn't be in. It allows the country to buy things they really have no business buying. And, and, and really, it just keeps governments accountable. If you have a hard cap money supply, what we call in that economics hard money, it's because it can't be printed. If there's only so much gold in the ground, you can't print more gold. You can only dig up more gold, and that's only if you find it. If you don't find any, there's no more gold, which means that the purchasing price of gold will stay either stay the same or go up if more people get interested in buying gold. The same is with Bitcoin. I'm going to use Bitcoin because it's the most recognizable cryptocurrency. Hard cap, 21 million, will never be any more. And right now, I think we're in what, 18, 19, 20 million already mined? Or I think it's probably like 19 million. Uh, already mined out of circulation so there's not even that much more that will ever be introduced into the ecosystem so the chance of bitcoin being devalued other than you know the volatile price swings that we see that is very typical of cryptocurrencies bitcoin can really really only, only go up the dollar the euro the yen the peso the baht 
the yuan, those can be printed. If if Xi Jinping wanted to print money, make more yuan, he would. If Donald Trump wants to make more and he does, he would. It, you get my drift? That means that you can buy less things, right? Because more of something equals less value. It's just the way it is. No one wants to buy gravel, a gravel engagement ring. Everyone wants sparkly, nice, rare engagement rings. Perfect. Catch my drift. So this is a cool article here. Um, more conceptual, just get you thinking on how blockchain is relevant in the world. But more important, and more, more importantly, you being an investor, you being a crypto enthusiast, you being just someone who's into tech, can see the trend. The future trend is automation. The future trend is reduced inefficiency. The future trend is financial inclusion. The future trend is is blockchain. So I'm Dub Digital, guys. Uh, like, comment, subscribe if you like what you hear. I get, keep bringing you this information on the daily basis on the regular Hot Hot Crypto Fire, Dub Digital, sign out. Peace.